Hey guys, welcome back. Well, if you're uh, if you're watching this, either you number one stumbled across it accidentally, or two came back because the first one wasn't all that bad. Well, maybe it was, but um, anyway, you're back, and so um, I hope it worked out for you. Um, this is going to be number five and homework five one, and I'm sitting here, uh, like I said before, in my in my hotel room, and got some emails that you guys are having some trouble with this. So let's see if we can get this. To work out for you. By the way, I don't have my usual mic with me, so you might be hearing the hum of the uh, uh, the the heating system in the background. But uh, just just try to bear with it. So, all right, this is going to be number five, uh, parts A and B. Okay. So the best way to do number five, actually, first of all, I need to change something. Let's look at number five. In fact, I'm going to write it out. Um, well, I'm going to write out A right here. 5A. Okay? Find the direction. Direction. Hmm. This isn't really working too well for me. D I R E. Find direction um, of trains motion. And I'm writing this out for you for a reason. Trains motion relative to north. Well, it says that. relative to north. But we don't want that, right? Because whenever we have any kind of angle, we don't want it based off of the vertical, do we? So that's a typo, or that's, well, it may have been intended, but um, we don't want to have to deal with that right now, or I don't want you guys to have to deal with that. You have enough to deal with right now. We want the train's motion relative to west. To west, okay? Um, and by the way, the answer is, um, well, that actually is 64 degrees west of north, like it said, but we don't like it like that. We don't like it based off of the, the vertical. We want it based off the horizontal. So the same thing that would be 64 west of north would be 26 north of west. 26 degrees oops, north of west. That's going to be our answer. <clears throat> for part A. And so we want it to say relative to west, not north. So go ahead and make that change and then change the final answer as well. That's what we want it to be. Okay. Well, so what's happening here? We've got a train moving with constant velocity, travels 170 meters north in a certain amount of time, and undetermined distance to the west. So that means it's traveling north and west simultaneously, which means it's traveling at an angle. Okay, this is the constant velocity. We might say this is um, VI. Okay, V initial in that direction. It's not VIX, it's not VIY, because it's in neither direction, or it's not VI north or VI south. It's simply VI. That's that vector, you might say. Um, that's 32 meters per second. All right, and. Um, we don't know how far west it went in a certain amount, in that amount of time. Okay, that's west going that way, and it went a certain distance north. But we do know that. Okay, it went how far north? It went 170 meters north, and it did that in. 12 seconds. Oops, that looks 125. That looks bad. 1, 2, S. 12 seconds. Okay, so that's north. Just like that. Alright. So, we're told it goes 170 meters north in 12 seconds as it's going at this velocity right here at an angle. But we don't know how far west um, west it's going. Um, okay, we also don't know, by the way, what that angle is right there. And that, incidentally, that theta, that's the answer to A that we want to find. So we want to solve for what that direction is, what that angle is right there. Okay, so north 
we're going to call y. That looks like a less than sign, doesn't it? Let's back that up there. North is y, and west equals our x-axis. Okay, so let's uh, let's put some stuff together here now to try to try to solve this. By the way, this is all the information that we're given. Does it make sense that the north component here is a displacement over time? And if you think about that for a second, displacement over time, what is that? Ah, that's velocity, right? Initial velocity in the y direction. That is 170 meters in 12 seconds. So what velocity does that come out to be? That comes out to be 14.2 meters per second. Meters per second in the y direction. Okay, so we know that the, you might say the angled velocity or the vector velocity or just the regular old vi that is at an angle is 32 meters per second. So what we should be able to do is solve for what that angle is right there. Well, how? Well, because, in fact, let me uh, switch to black right here. We know what the vector is for that side of this triangle. We know what the vector is for this side of the triangle right here. So we can use our velocity vectors in the angled direction and in the north direction to solve for what theta is right there. How do we do that? Well, sine, the sine of theta equals the opposite over the adjacent, right? So the sine of this angle theta right here is the north component over, I'm sorry, not over the adjacent, over the hypotenuse, right? The sine of this angle is um, the opposite over the hypotenuse. So O over H or you might say the y vector for velocity over the hypotenuse vector for velocity. So that is 14.2 meters per second divided by h, that's 32 meters per second. All right, well, if we want to solve for theta itself, and that means theta is the inverse sine inverse sine of 14.2 over 32. All right, does that make sense? So we're solving for that angle there based off of the horizontal or based off of the west. And what does that come out to be? Inverse sine of 14.2 over 32. That comes out to be 26 degrees. 26 degrees, you might say, uh, north of west. Okay, so this is 26 degrees, right in there. So that's our answer for A. Uh, actually, um, yeah, yeah, that's our answer for A. Sorry, I'll box that off. <coughs> My pen is still acting funny here. Okay, I'm going to actually write B down below here because I took the whole top to write A. What we also want to find is what is the vertical displacement? No, no, I'm looking at the wrong one. I'm, uh, sorry, uh, B is how far west has the train traveled in this time? All right, so what is the x displacement? If west is x, well, then that means how far west has it traveled? Well, in order to know that, we would need to know the initial velocity in the x direction. And do we know that? We don't. We know the, you might say the, the regular old uh, initial velocity right here at an angle. We know the y component of velocity, but we don't know the x direction velocity. But we can find it out, right? We can use a Pythagorean. If, um, oh, sorry. If the x hat squared plus y hat squared equals, I would say hypotenuse squared. All right, we want to solve 
for the x direction. So x, well let's uh, let's subtract y squared from both sides. The x component squared equals the hypotenuse squared minus the y component squared. So if we solve simply for x, well the x displacement of the x component of a, of a vector, that would be the square root of hypotenuse squared minus the y component squared. Well, we can do that because we have the hypotenuse and the y component velocity vectors, and so we can solve for the velocity vector of x. So, initial velocity of x equals what? That's the hypotenuse velocity, or simply vi squared. That's 32 meters per second squared minus the y component squared. What's the y velocity? The y velocity is 14.2, right? 14.2 meters per second. That value squared as well. Okay? So subtract 14.2 squared from 32 squared. Take the square root of that, and we have our initial velocity in the x direction. Which is what? That's 29 meters per second. So we use the Pythagorean, use the two sides of this triangle right here, to solve what the velocity was in the x direction. Great, so are we done? Well no, because we need to use that in conjunction with time, which, what, um, what time are we given here? That's 12 seconds, right? t equals 12 seconds to find our x displacement. That's what we want to find out. Well, okay, if velocity is displacement over time, then that means our displacement equals velocity times time. And we can solve for that down here. So our displacement in the x direction, how far has it traveled? That would be 29 meters per second. That's our, our velocity in the x direction. 29 meters per second times time, which is 12 seconds. And that, my friends, gives us a x displacement of 348 meters. That's how far west it's moved. So that's our x displacement for part B. Part A was what is the angle of that, uh, if you might say, VI from the um, the horizontal, and we got that too. So I hope hope that this clears up some things for you for um, from homework 5.1. I hope that doesn't mean the homework 5.2 is going to be that much harder for you, but uh, there are some videos to walk you through that as well. So give these a try. Shoot me an email if you have any more problems, and I'll uh, see what I can do for you. In the meantime, take care. <laughs>